Today, I want to dive headfirst into the subject of why you need a buffer. And in doing so, I want to demystify the buffer because honestly, it's confusing. What is a buffer? Where did it come from? Did ancient aliens bring it down? Is it witchcraft? What is going on with a buffer? I know it's confusing. I know there's a hundred opinions and I know you need help. So let's break it down simply. Let's get to the point. Let's help you figure out if a buffer is something that you need. Let's open something up. I have from 1981 Inventions, the new pedal. So 1981 is a friend of mine, Matthew Hoops. You might know him as the guitarist in a band called Reliant K. Uh, let's open this and take a look. We have a nice, see, he has sticky notes. Um, once again, these people just do stuff better than me sometimes. Sticker, and we have a pin, 1981 pin, and it looks like the pedal is wrapped in butcher paper. That is awesome. Let's open it up. There's even more stuff inside. We have a manual. Thanks a lot, Matthew, for having better packaging than me, once again. Sweet setting guide. This does look like butcher. Okay, there's a bag. Like, it's like a pedal backpack. Let's unzip the pedal backpack. Now it's in another bag. I feel like it's those, the Russian eggs, like you open the one egg and there's another egg. All right, four eggs in. Here's the pedal. The 1981 Inventions Drive. So drive, cut, and volume. This pedal looks phenomenal. So we hung out in Nashville a little bit when he dropped this off, that's where he lives. He even had the enclosure made. Um, he's worked on this a while and it looks really great. Check it out. Guys, we all have a problem. First off, we're guitar players. Secondly, we love to buy new pedals. And every time we buy a new pedal, we buy a patch cable to hook it into our already overcrowded boards. What happens is every foot of cable introduces signal loss, high-end roll-off, and also capacitance. To understand this, just know that every time you plug a cable in, it's like barely rolling off the tone control of your guitar. This happens whether your pedals are on or off. We need to break this down and you need to understand it a little bit better, so let's head outside. So this is the basics of how a buffer works. This spigot is simply your guitar. Water is going to come out of it representing the signal of your guitar. So when I turn it on, there's no restriction. Nothing is getting in between your guitar and the amp. Now let's put this garden hose after the faucet representing your ridiculously large pedal board and show you what happens. I think you get the point. So how do we fix this issue of current or signal loss? It's actually incredibly easy. You just add a buffer. So just as the water nozzle is reintroducing the original pressure into the long water hose, that's what a buffer does with your long runs of guitar cable. It doesn't change the sound, it doesn't add to it, it just reintroduces that original strength down the entire line of cable. So you might be wondering, how in the world do I know if I actually need a buffer? People on forums say I do, I think I don't, someone else says I don't, I'm really confused. Here's a simple test that I've told people to do for years and years and it always works. Here's what you need, your guitar rig. I want you to sit down in front of your amp with your board, plug your guitar in just like you would when you normally play. Turn all of your pedals off and I want you to take 60 seconds and strum chords, G major, C, D, 
Listen to how they ring out. Listen for clarity. Listen to the treble end and the bass end and just focus on it. You're not allowed to shred. Next, take your guitar, unplug from your pedal board and plug straight into your amp. Do the same thing, same chords. Focus, high end, low end, and clarity. Some of you might notice that it sounds like you changed guitar strings when you plugged into your amp. That is proof that you need a buffer. And you're in luck because there's a lot of ways to get your buffer on. Companies like myself with JHS offer independent small buffers. This is the little black buffer for a mono guitar signal. It has a simple in and an out. You can even hide it underneath your board. And we have something called the buffered splitter, which gives you one in and two outs. So you can go to a couple amps or do some different things with it. These are handy and a lot of companies, friends of mine, make those. And they're all really great. There's no such thing as a bad buffer. We also take things like an Ernie Ball volume and we have an active no loss mod. So it becomes active and it gets a cool LED inside. So if you have a volume pedal, instead of buying and using more real estate and cash, maybe just mod your pedal to have our buffer in it. And last but not least, every Boss pedal has a great buffer, despite what you've heard. This is kind of the benchmark standard, in my opinion, of a really clean, transparent buffering system and every Boss pedal is usable in that way. So now that you understand if you need a buffer, which is very likely, you need to know where to put the buffer. So there's some simple rules. If you have a large pedal board, you need a buffer at the beginning and the end. We call this sandwiching the board. So uh, what's useful about this approach is that many of you already run boss delay pedals or boss reverbs, or you have Strymon reverbs or delays, and inside those Strymons you can activate the buffer or true bypass option. So the back end is usually already taken care of if you have a large pedal board. Now, the beginning is what people usually don't have taken care of. So in that case, you need to keep the buffer on the back side of any fuzz. You do not want to put a buffer in front of this. You want your guitar to go into your fuzz pedals. That's kind of the number one rule. Do not break that rule. Put your buffers after fuzzes and keep on going and you're good to go. Today's record time is brought to you by His Golden Messenger and the album is Heart Like a Levy. So they have a lot of records and I was unaware of their existence and how good those records are. I heard a track on this on a friend's playlist and kind of panicked, like who is that? Why have I never heard it? Because I love it and uh, I can't recommend this enough. My favorite tracks are Deluxe, track one. I love Like a Mirror Loves a Hammer. The guitar work is amazing. And my favorite song is Cracked Windshield. If you've never heard of His Golden Messenger, I think you need to check it out. You'll be a better person, and uh, if you don't like good music, just don't listen to it. That's my advice for you. That's a wrap for today. I hope that you found this useful, and I just want to remind you as always, play guitar and have fun with that. Don't obsess over these topics, especially these things like true bypass and buffers and what do you need. Because remember, Jimi Hendrix, he had no buffers and he actually had horrible signal loss. He used these coily cables, which I quite enjoy because I use fuzz pedals a lot, so they actually add in some loss, and that's why I use them, because I don't want so much high end. So just remember, all of you are different. I'm different. It's all opinion-based, based on your ears and what you want out of your rig. That's why these things are impossible to find a good answer on a forum, because only you know what you want to hear. So I encourage you, just play guitar, do the test I ask you to do, Take it from there and be confident in what you have going on for yourself. If you like this episode, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and then hit that little bell and that'll notify you of future upcoming episodes. So until next time, have a wonderful day.